Unless you grew up in North Texas during the 90s or aughts, the words Dalworth Clean probably don't mean anything to you. It's a carpet steam cleaning company that has been servicing the Dallas-Fort Worth area for over 40 years and whose commercials were ubiquitous on terrestrial television stations when I was a child. The commercials themselves were pretty unremarkable. In each iteration, someone, whether it be a party guest with a piece of pie, a young child wearing muddy galoshes, or a wet dog, dirties the beige carpet of a suburban North Texas home, and two Dalworth men dressed in white, short sleeve button-up shirts and black ties arrive at the scene of the grime to steam clean the carpet and save the day. But if the commercials are so formulaic, why am I still talking about them 20 years later? Because the Dalworth clean jingle is a banger. Call 267-8433 because the next best thing to do is Dalworth clean. Everyone who grew up in DFW knows this song, so much so that if you wanted to recreate a Texan communal singing experience like the one in Pee Wee's Big Adventure, The stars at night are big and bright! You might have a better chance with the Dalworth clean jingle than with Deep in the Heart of Texas. I'm exaggerating, but only slightly. The Dalworth clean jingle is the very definition of an earworm, that is, a catchy and or memorable piece of music that continuously occupies a person's mind even after it is no longer being played or spoken about. We all get these earworms from time to time. Busta Rhymes' 1997 song Dangerous takes its chorus from an earwormy 1983 public service announcement produced by the Long Island Regional Poison Control Council. And G Unit's 2003 song My Buddy takes its chorus from a commercial for a popular 1980s children's toy of the same name. My buddy, my buddy. Wherever I go, he goes, my buddy, my buddy, my buddy, my buddy. I'll teach him everything that I know. And it's no surprise that earworms often come from advertisements. That's just marketing doing its job. And being infected with an earworm can be annoying, to put it mildly both to the person with the worm and to those around them. There are several ways to exterminate an earworm. Studies show that chewing gum or occupying one's mind with a task that engages the working memory can be helpful. I've always found that listening to the offending song repeatedly is the best insecticide for dealing with an earworm. But what do you do when the jingle that's stuck in your head can't be found anywhere? Welcome to Mount Molehill, a place where even the smallest mysteries become mountains. I'm Chris, and this week I'm searching for a missing jingle for the once popular but now nearly defunct Texas restaurant chain, Poncho's Mexican Buffet. Does anyone else remember it? Who made it? Why can't I find it anywhere? And does it even really exist? Let's make a mountain out of this molehill. In order to understand why I care so much about the Poncho's Mexican Buffet jingle, you've got to know a bit about the restaurant itself. The restaurant was founded in El Paso, Texas in 1958 by Jesse Arambide Jr. Jesse learned how to cook Tex-Mex from his mother, but it was while serving on board a naval troop ship during World War II that he gained an understanding of the economy of scale as it relates to food. And it was these two things, a passion for Tex-Mex cuisine and a knowledge of how to serve it to large groups, that inspired Arambide to open a buffet-style Tex-Mex restaurant. And he was pretty successful. Arambide tried out a few different restaurant concepts after his success with the first Poncho's Buffet. There were two full-service versions of Poncho's, a seafood buffet called the Spanish Galleon, and a separate Mexican eatery dubbed Emiliano's. But none of those other concepts really panned out. Poncho's Mexican Buffet was the only chain of Arambides that truly had legs. Poncho's continued to grow over the next couple of decades, and was a profitable business every year from inception up until 1979, 
At which point Arambide decided to step down and turn over his role as CEO of Ponchos to President Hollis Taylor. Taylor was able to rejigger the business model, improving operational margins while at the same time expanding Ponchos to 55 locations in five states, Texas, Louisiana, New Mexico, Arizona, and Oklahoma. This was quite an impressive feat considering that this was happening during the oil industry bust of the early 1980s, and Poncho's restaurants were primarily located in oil country. Poncho's was able to keep afloat by offering a variety of all-you-can-eat Tex-Mex food at extremely competitive prices. Even into the late 80s, the buffet price for adults was only $3.99, with children between 6 and 11 eating for half of that and children under six eating for free. But the 1990s would prove to be a time of turmoil for ponchos. They continued to expand at an annual rate of 10%, which would prove to be a bit too ambitious. In 1993, Jesse R. Jr. passed away and was succeeded by his son Jesse III, and ponchos struggled to increase its bottom line. Several locations were closed, and prices had to be increased from $3.99 to $5.49, despite Poncho's entering an agreement with food distribution juggernaut the Cisco Corporation in 1994. And it was at this time that Poncho started an aggressive marketing campaign to offset the negative publicity of its increased prices and decreased quality. The advertising campaign was somewhat successful and centered on the Poncho's gimmick of raising the flag, which is something we haven't talked about yet, but is definitely one of the main reasons that the buffet chain is remembered fondly today. Try raising a flag at a fast food place and see what you get. At Poncho's Mexican Buffet, it'll get you more of the things you love from our all-you-can-eat buffet for just $4.99. You see, at pretty much any buffet restaurant you've probably ever eaten at, when you want more food, you get up, grab a tray and some plates, and start piling it on yourself. But Poncho's was a little bit different. You'd come in, pay your fees, and then take your tray down a cafeteria-style line in which you'd tell the servers what you want to eat, and they'd put some on a plate and hand it to you. After you had finished your first round, you could go back in line, or you could alert a server that you were hungry using a much kitschier method, raising the flag. Each table at Poncho's had a miniature flagpole on it with a Mexican flag, and if you wanted more food, you'd haul the mini halyard, the flag would go up, a server would come and ask you what you wanted, and a few minutes later you'd have a fresh plate of sopapillas without ever having to leave your table. And we'll definitely talk more about raising the flag later, but let's finish up telling the history of Poncho's first. So the ad campaign and increased prices in 1994 helped boost store sales, but the success was only temporary, and Poncho's Mexican buffet slowly began to die. The company continued to lose money throughout the latter half of the 1990s, and in 1998, it was forced to move from the NASDAQ national market to the NASDAQ small cap market due to poor stock performance. In the 2000s, the company tested two new concepts, an even cheaper version of the buffet called Poncho's Express Buffet, and a higher-end alternative dubbed Poncho's Buffet and Grill. Neither concept was successful, and in 2001, Poncho's was purchased by Texas veteran restaurateur Stephen Oyster for $7.35 million. At its apex in 1988, there were 55 Poncho's restaurants in five states. Today, all locations outside of Texas have been shuttered, and only five locations remain in operation in the cities of Mesquite, Humble, Houston, Arlington, and Fort Worth. Well, after eating at Poncho's, I want to be well. That's audio taken from a bootleg recording of the Ramones performing at the Panther Hall in Fort Worth, Texas on February 18, 1978. It's not uncommon for touring bands to shout out local spots to ingratiate themselves with the audience, but it was almost mind-blowing for me to hear Joey Ramone introduce I Want to Be Well by talking about Poncho's Mexican Buffet. This is essentially putting Poncho's, a restaurant that pretty much no one outside of Texas has ever heard of, 
on the same level as In-N-Out, Wawa, Skyline Chili, or any other locally grown but nationally known regional institution. And this is just one of the many examples of how ponchos became part of the post-war, pre-Y2K zeitgeist in Texas. There are parody songs. Like a poncho's rust boy Riding out on the night with the towel in an old bus tub Having a cold day I think I'll go to poncho Start at the buffet, yeah! There are podcasts. Like if we were going to go to a restaurant, we were going to go to a buffet because it was it was easy. Everybody could find something they could eat. But but in particular, Poncho's Mexican Buffet. My dad loved it more than I've ever seen a grown man love any restaurant. You know, it was Tex-Mex. just Mex. And I'm telling you, you haven't had Tex-Mex until you've been to Texas. My favorite restaurant by far was Poncho's. Not sure. It was featured in episode 19 of season 3 of that most Texan of all TV shows, King of the Hill. <gasps> what this calls for soap of peas. All right, yeah. How about them cowboys? Soap for everyone. There are YouTube videos. I'm raising my flag. I want more. You raise your flag and you get more food. Okay. And now I'm done and I'm going to get dessert. And guess what we have for dessert? Sopa Pias. And of course, there were a slew of commercials. Ponchos in the Port Air Shopping Center. Your Sopa Pia headquarters. And the most famous commercial featured a jingle. And not just any jingle, but one of the earwormiest jingles you ever did hear. I apologize in advance for this, but it went a little something like this Raise the flag. Raise the flag. If you're ready for a little more ponchos, raise the flag. Raise the flag. You're ready for a little more ponchos, Mexican buffet. I can still hear it now, like it was only yesterday. I mentioned at the top of the episode that my preferred method of dealing with an earworm is to listen to it over and over. And that's how this whole thing started. It was a normal day like any other, except for some reason, The Poncho's Mexican Buffet jingle bored its way into my brain, and I couldn't get it out. So, of course, I went to Google and searched for Poncho's Mexican Buffet jingle so that I could listen to it. I didn't find it. Then I went to YouTube. Didn't find it there either. I went to archive.org. Nope, not there either. Did this jingle actually exist, or was it a figment of my imagination? When my partner got home from work, I frantically began questioning her, demanding that she sing me the Poncho's Mexican Buffet jingle. And just as I was about to lose all grip on reality, she sang it back to me exactly as I remembered it. I was, at the very least, relieved to hear it because this meant that I wasn't going crazy. But it was at that moment that I knew deep down that Poncho's Mexican Buffet was about to consume my every waking thought for the foreseeable future. I had to find that f***ing jingle. So, the first thing I had to do was confirm that this jingle actually existed. After all, the only thing so far that had affirmed its existence was my significant other. She grew up in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex during the 90s and aughts, so she would have been exposed to it, But on the other hand, her and I have been together for 10 years, so it's possible that if this jingle was just something that I made up, she was just repeating back to me something that she had heard me sing earlier at some point in our relationship. It seemed possible that the Poncho's Mexican Buffet jingle was an example of the so-called Mandela effect, so before jumping in head first to this and scouring the furthest reaches of the World Wide Web, I decided that it would be best to first establish that this jingle did in fact exist. I wanted to ask other people if they remember the jingle, and if so, if they knew where I could find it. So I decided that I would make a post on Reddit to see if anyone knew anything, and this is where I ran into the first of many roadblocks. I had just started a new Reddit account for this podcast, and as such, I didn't have enough karma to submit a self-post. So I spent the next few weeks building up karma by putting my Google foo and knowledge of all things obscure to work 
and answering questions on the Help Me Find and Tip of My Tongue subreddits. That took a few weeks and kind of ended up going to waste anyway since I decided on a different name for the podcast, so I no longer use that Reddit account, but I digress. Once I had finally built up enough karma, I made a post to the Houston, Dallas, and Ask DFW subreddits that went like this. Does anyone remember the Poncho's Mexican Buffet jingle? It went something like this. Raise the flag, raise the flag, if you're ready for a little more ponchos, raise the flag, raise the flag, you're ready for a little more ponchos Mexican buffet. I believe this jingle was primarily used in radio spots, but it could have been used in TV ads as well. It seems like everyone I talked to that grew up around a ponchos, at least in the DFW area, Remembers this jingle very well, but I haven't been able to find any trace of this jingle online. I've found a couple commercials, but so far I've been unable to locate any trace of the iconic jingle. Is there anybody out there that has a recording that features the jingle? Does this jingle still get played on the radio? Please help, I just want to raise the flag. And there were quite a few responses, many of which confirmed that they remembered the jingle and that I had gotten the lyrics right, which was good enough for me to reasonably say that this wasn't just some Mandela effect thing that I had made up in my mind. But the responses mostly consisted of people sharing memories of ponchos, which was fun, but didn't really help me. There were a few interesting responses, though. There were a few replies about other people's unsuccessful search for the jingle, which made me feel better because at least I wasn't the only one out there who couldn't find it. But there was one response that really stood out by a user who said, If I'm not mistaken, there were actually a few different ads that featured that jingle. The one with the baby with a fake mustache and sombrero standing out the most, and others being more like a regular restaurant ads. The one with the baby looked very low budget and maybe from much more obscure sources. But the other was higher in budget and maybe the product of an agency that is still active in the DFW area. I used to work in TV commercial production in Dallas when these ads were in rotation. I'll poke some old contacts and see if any leads shake up. I find myself suddenly invested in this mystery. Now that sounded promising, but the user never got back to me. All right, so at this point, it's looking like I'm just going to have to brute force it. I know this jingle exists. Other people know it exists, but nobody knows where to find it. So back to YouTube. So I just searched for Poncho's Mexican Buffet on YouTube and went through every single video. Literally every single video. I scrolled until there were no more results left. And I don't know if you know how many results show up in a YouTube search, but trust me, it's a lot. The next place I looked was archive.org. I went through all the audio and video search results for Poncho's Mexican Buffet, but again, didn't find anything. I looked up videos of commercials that were taped off the local DFW affiliates of Fox, UPN, and CBS, which was only about two hours all in all, but again, no dice. So I scoured archive.org for radio broadcast recordings from the Texas markets that used to have Poncho's restaurants. I listened to over 25 hours of old Texas radio broadcasts from 1986 to 2012. And while there was some fun and interesting stuff in there... Hi, it is Lisa, and it's back. We have another virus. This one is called the Killer Resume One, and this is just... Once again, the Poncho's Mexican Buffet jingle was nowhere to be found. As a last-ditch effort, I went through every single snapshot of the Poncho's website on the Wayback Machine. I found some music files, but it was just some generic southwestern sounding music. And it was at this point that I first began to have some serious doubts about whether or not I would ever be able to hear the Poncho's Mexican Buffet jingle again. I had pretty much exhausted every avenue at this point, and I'm just one guy with limited resources and no connection to the food service or advertising world. And while there had been a few people along the way that did express some interest in helping me find the jingle, their investment into tracking it down was only fleeting. No one seemed to care as much as I did about a decades-old restaurant jingle. No one, that is, except Kevin Toomey. I've been living with a mystery. 
On February 5th, 2021, Kevin posted a short documentary chronicling his 13-year journey to find the singer of a radio jingle for a Columbus, Ohio pizza restaurant, and he went to great lengths tracking the singer down. Something I've been wrestling with for a decade of my life. I got in the horn and started making calls. I can go down the Gloria Estefan wormhole as deep as that sucker goes. And while he did not initially find an answer, by May 2021, he had posted a follow-up documentary finally putting his jingle mystery to rest. And watching Kevin's documentary gave me the strength I needed to forge ahead in my own search. And I continued my quest with renewed vigor. And in fact, my next lead actually came from Kevin. When I reached out to him to ask for his permission to include clips from his documentary in this podcast, he not only responded, but he also provided me with some helpful info. In a message on Instagram, he said, For what it's worth, don't think much of it is included in my doc because it didn't end up going anywhere, but I was in touch with an old producer guy who had a huge jingle production company in Dallas. He was certain he'd help me find the jingle, but never actually was able to. If your jingle comes from the Dallas area, you should email him. You can tell them I suggested you reach out since they were helpful in my search for the Rodolo's Pizza Jingle Singer. He's a Dallas-based jingle producer. And I did reach out to that person, but I never got a response. Well, thanks anyways for trying, Kevin. So at this point, it was pretty obvious to me that if the Poncho's jingle is on the internet, it's not anywhere that I'm going to find it. And, at least so far, reaching out to other internet sleuths hasn't led anywhere either. So the only logical thing to do was to try and contact someone who was actually involved with Poncho's Mexican Buffet. So I went to the Poncho's website, and I noticed that they had a page where you could subscribe to emails. So I signed up in the hopes that I would receive a welcome letter, and that I'd then have an official Poncho's email address to respond to. But the welcome letter never came, so my next option was to start calling Ponchos. And yes, these are actual calls. Hi, I was wondering if you had the contact information for the owner? Okay, give me one second so I flip. Okay. Okay. Thanks for calling Ponchos. Hi. Huh? Is it, are you the owner of Ponchos? No, I'm just a manager. Oh, I was wondering if you had any contact information for the owner. Uh, for what? Um, I had a question about uh, an old ad campaign that used to run on TV and the radio, and I was wondering if he might know any information about that. Mm, you know, Pancho's, it's been, uh, we have been sold like five times in the last, <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. last 23 years. Yeah, I, I, how long have you worked there? Since 98. So you, you probably remember those Raise the Flag commercials? Yes, yeah, at one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's actually what I was trying to Mm -hmm. reached out to the owner about is to try out find out some more information about that well there's two one of them is not in the country okay he, he travels a lot and the other one is always busy he doesn't want me to share his phone number or email but he wants okay. you to leave a, a message but if you want to okay. catch him if you uh, you don't live in this area right no not okay. not anymore if you want to catch him, he's here. I want to say he always comes by to pick up some paperwork. Okay. Or you can yeah. leave your message. If you leave your message, I'm not going to guarantee that he's going to call you back. You know, unless there's something super, super big. That's the only reason why he calls you back. But if you want to catch him, he's always here. Okay. And Thank you. you. I mean, the honor, okay. Yeah, the, the message is just uh, that I have some questions about that ad campaign. Yeah, he was around. He's been with Pancho's for like 50 years, so he was around. Okay. The um, is there... there. Uh-huh. Uh, um, so 
I mean, there's probably not a big chance of him getting back to me on this, but I'll go ahead and leave my number if that's yes, okay. Yes, if you want to. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is it's, all uh, I can do, okay? I'm just a messenger. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I understand. But if it's like uh, something big, then I give it to them and they call you back. They only call you back when there's like complaints or, you know, big things. Oh, no, but I don't, it, I don't have any it, complaints. Okay. <laughs> Let me see. What, what's your phone number? It is uh, 505. For uh, your name? Chris. And you don't work for a company, right? No, no. This no, is no, just, just personal interest. Oh, okay. Sounds good. I'll All right. Give it well, to thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Bye. It didn't sound likely that I would ever get a response from the owners of this ponchos, but luckily I knew that the five remaining ponchos Mexican buffets were not all owned by the same people. It's kind of hard to tell, but I think there are possibly three separate groups of owners for the five remaining restaurants. One company owns the Arlington and Fort Worth locations. That much seems pretty clear because on ponchos Mexican buffet DFW.com, those two locations are both listed on the Our Locations page. But on that same website, under the About Us section, there is another page called Other Locations Not Affiliated. This page lists the Mesquite, Humble, and Houston locations. Then if you go to the About Us page on Poncho's Mexican Buffet Houston.com, it states, quote, With three convenient locations, you need not look for authentic Mexican food any further, end quote. However, if you go to their locations page, they only list the Humble location. And here's some unfortunate news, folks. The reason the Houston location is no longer listed is because that apparently shut down sometime around September 2022 after I had already started digging into this. So there's actually only four ponchos left. But interestingly, neither the DFW nor the Houston Ponchos websites claim ownership of the Mesquite location, which definitely is open because at the time of this recording, there are Google reviews for the Mesquite location from just two days ago. All of that is just a long-winded way of saying that just because the company that owns the Arlington and Fort Worth companies probably won't get back to me, all hope is not lost. So I called the Mesquite location with the ambiguous ownership first. I figured they only have one location, they don't have an official website, it's probably owned by a smaller company, and maybe they'll be more likely to talk to me. But they just hung up on me. So I called the Humble location next. Hello, and thanks for calling. To be put through to the restaurant, please hold. Do you know you can order online to get the best deals? We've just sent you a text message with a link to order online, so why not try it now? Hi, um, I was wondering if you could give me some contact information for the owner. The owner is not in right now, and uh, she's on vacation, so she won't be here until next week. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Okay, I guess I'll try again next week. Once again, at this point, I'm questioning this whole thing. I'm calling buffet restaurants and bothering people to find a 30-year-old jingle. This is what an insane person does. So my next step was to start reaching out to everyone that had ever worked for the Ponchos Corporation on LinkedIn. I'm exaggerating, but I did go through every LinkedIn profile that listed Poncho's Mexican Buffet as an employer and there were a lot, as you can imagine, but there were two that I keyed in on that sounded like they might actually be able to help me. One was the former vice president of marketing for Poncho's Mexican Buffet, and the other was the former director of marketing. If, if they got back to me, that would be amazing because they both worked in marketing for Poncho's during the time when the commercial played. But I didn't have much hope, however, because... I had to reach out to one of them via Facebook, which means that they would first have to accept a friend request from someone they don't know. And the other person, I had to send an email to their current employer via the contact page on their website and hope that not only did they actually read the email, but that they would then route it to the right person and then they would read it and decide to respond. So at this point, all I could do was wait. 
wait for the owners of the Arlington and Fort Worth locations to call me, wait for the humble owner to get back from vacation, and wait for the two former employees to respond to me. So that's what I did. I waited. And while I waited, I began to retrace my steps. I was just looking for something, anything that I missed that would aid me in my search for the Poncho's Mexican Buffet jingle. But I couldn't find anything. And after waiting weeks and getting no response from any of the people I had reached out to, the only thing I had left to do was call the humble location again. Help you. Hi, I was wondering if you had any uh, contact information for the owner. Give me just one second. Okay. I waited on hold for 10 minutes, but no one ever got back to me. Clearly, nobody at the remaining Poncho's restaurants wants to talk to me about this. And these aren't the only calls that I made either. There were several more that I didn't include in the interest of time that all ended very much the same way. Either they did not want to talk to me or they didn't have any information about the jingle. I decided that, for now, it's probably best to stop calling them for a while. There's a fine line between being persistent and being annoying, and I felt that I had started to cross that line. And that's it. No one was willing to talk to me about the Poncho's Mexican Buffet jingle. My internet sleuthing had reached its limits, and as much as I've laid out for you here, there was a lot more investigating that I didn't really go into because it all led to dead ends. We're talking newspapers, obituaries, public relations firms in Colorado, dead forums. I put in a ridiculous amount of effort trying to find this jingle. And at this point, it was all for naught. It seems that I'm no closer to hearing that jingle than I was when I started. I may never get to raise the flag again. And that's a depressing thought. But why? Why do I care so much about a mid-90s jingle for a Mexican buffet on the verge of collapse? In an article on Inverse.com about the power of nostalgia, psychological scientist Clay Rutledge said that Nostalgia is one of the tools we use to remind ourselves that we matter. And maybe that's why I care so much. Maybe this whole thing wasn't about ponchos at all. Maybe it was about me and my place in the world. Because if something that was so beloved by so many people could just be discarded and forgotten so easily, what's to stop the same thing from happening to me? And how can I remind myself that I matter if the things that matter to me don't matter to anyone else? Does anything matter? An existential crisis, courtesy of Poncho's Mexican Buffet. Even though I've done everything in my power to find this jingle and come up with nothing, I'm not ready to say that I'm done searching. More like, Poncho and I are on a break. By the time this episode releases, I will have been looking for the Poncho's jingle for over a year to no avail. So I'm asking you, dear listeners, to help me find this jingle because I just want to raise the flag one last time. Update. I originally began writing this story on October 27th, 2022, and by that point in time, I had already done most of the investigation detailed in this episode. I had already gone through YouTube, Archive.org, and seemingly the entire internet with a fine-toothed comb in search of the Poncho's Mexican Buffet jingle. Well, it's now July 23rd, 2023, at 8.54pm, just under 10 hours before this podcast is set to premiere, and I have some exciting news, folks. The Poncho's Mexican Buffet jingle has been found at least partially. I was at my computer just making sure that all my I's were dotted and T's crossed before premiering the podcast tomorrow, or I guess today, as you guys are hearing it, and I just decided to once again do a quick search for the jingle. And there it was. After searching for it for so long, 
It was just sitting on YouTube. I almost couldn't believe it. Apparently, on March 20th, 2023, YouTube user Chenoweth Rules uploaded a video of commercials that aired on May 19th, 2002 on the Dallas-Fort Worth local Fox affiliate, KDFW. And two days after that, YouTube user Kelsate uploaded a single commercial extracted from Chenoweth Rules' video. That commercial features the Poncho's Mexican Buffet jingle. Pancho, so you can eat Mexican buffet, invites you to experience real food at fast food prices. For around six bucks, choose from over 35 authentic Mexican recipes, all made from scratch every day. Got little ones? At Pancho's children under five eat three, and our big kids' buffet is just two ninety nine. dollars Pancho's fresh handmade Mexican food, great prices, and family fun. Still hungry? Raise the flag, raise the flag, you're ready for a little more Pancho Mexican buffet. I must have just sat here and listened to it about 20 times. I am irrationally excited about this. But I can't yet put this case fully to rest because if you'll notice, this commercial contains only an abbreviated version of the full jingle. The entire jingle goes, Raise the flag, raise the flag. If you're ready for a little more ponchos, raise the flag, raise the flag. You're ready for a little more Poncho's Mexican Buffet. And the version featured in this specific commercial omits the first part. Raise the flag, raise the flag. You're ready for a little more Poncho's Mexican Buffet. So yeah, this mystery isn't fully solved yet, but damn am I excited that I can finally listen to at least part of the jingle. You better believe I immediately downloaded the video from YouTube and uploaded it to archive.org. This episode was fully recorded, edited, and ready to go out tomorrow with a completely different ending, so I'm just super excited about this. Anyways, uh, thanks for listening to the series premiere of Mount Molehill. Mount Molehill is written, produced, and edited by me, Chris, with music by myself and Alex Bainter. Any voices other than mine featured on the podcast are computer-generated, unless otherwise noted. All of the sources used in this episode can be found in the show notes. This podcast features materials protected by the Fair Use Guidelines of Section 107 of the Copyright Act, all rights reserved to the copyright owners. Special thanks to Kevin Toomey on this episode for trying to help me out. If you have a molehill that you'd like me to turn into a mountain, whether it's a mystery that you just can't solve, or just an interesting topic you'd like me to delve into, please reach out. You can email me at mountmolehillpodcast at gmail.com, or you can call and leave me a voicemail at 505-218-6894. Follow us on Instagram to see updates and supplemental material for the show. Thanks for listening. I'll be back with another episode in two weeks.